Hey there, we're going to read Don't Feed the Worry Bug by Andy Green. On a bench in a park on a bright sunny day, Wince, the monster of worry, let time slip away. He looked at the clock. It was a quarter past two when Wince started to think about all he must do. He had homework and laundry. He needed clean pants. He must bake some cookies for the worry woo dance. Then Wint started to wonder, did he leave the light on? Was his backside too poofy? Where had all his friends gone? And his worries kept growing till he heard a soft buzz that made goosebumps appear, for he knew what it was. There was only one creature that made such a sound. Around monsters that worry, it could often be found. Some call it the worry bug, and this is for sure. If you feed it a worry, it will always want more. Buzz, buzz, Wince heard as its noisy wings flapped. It flew up and down as he shooed and he clapped. It flittered and fluttered around Wince's ear. In the blink of an eye, more worries appeared. Did he feed his fish, Ted? Did his dog get a bone? Did he send all his woo mail? Did he be bring his bike home? Should he go to the movies? Would he get a good grade? Will the weather be nice for the Woo Town Parade? And with every new worry that came Wince's way, the worry bug shouted, hip, hip, hooray. For the more that Wince worried, the more the bug grew. It nibbled and munched on his worry-filled stew. Wince said to the worry bug, perhaps you should leave? He asked quite politely. He even used please. Yet the worry bug stayed, and for the two of them knew that Wince would still worry. That's what he would do. As day turned to night, Wince got ready for bed. The worry bug yawned and laid next to his head. But its buzzing kept Wince from going to sleep, so he tossed and he turned and he tried to count sheep. While thoughts of what if could be, maybe, and might, made Wince worry more. He was worried all night. When morning arrived, Wince looked up and gasped. The worry bug had grown. It had happened so fast. It used to be so tiny, an annoyance quite small. Now it covered his kitchen, the ceiling, and wall. The bug's belly gurgled full of worries it was no longer could wince sweep it under the rug its buzzing went on and wince started to fret about all of the things that hadn't happened just yet no cookies were baked the laundry had piled wince hadn't done homework in such a long while enough wince exclaimed there must be a way to get rid of a worry bug it can no longer stay so Wince went to the library to read and take notes about catapults, cranes, wagons, and goats. He plotted and mapped and mapped out a worry bug graph, then called in the experts, the worry bug staff. Together they studied this bug, growing beast, and built a bug net out of Wince's bed sheets. They were having such fun, Wince was worried no more, and soon he was baking and doing his chores. But just when Wince thought his work was complete, the worry bug buzzed, I need something to eat. Wince looked at the bug. It was once again small. For while Wince had been busy, he hadn't worried at all. You've ignored me all day, the tiny bug said. And you haven't been worried, so I haven't been fed. Then the bug stomped its feet and buzzed all the more. Wince took a firm stand and showed it the door. 
I've got things to do. I must work. I must play. I'm not going to worry, so go on your way. Buzz, buzz, Wentz heard as the bug flew about, still trying to make one last worry come out. It flittered and fluttered around Wince's ear, yet Wince couldn't give in, and it soon disappeared. Wince knew very well that this wasn't the end. The bug might be back if he worried again. But Wince would be ready should he hear that buzz buzz to say no to the worry bug simply because... Wince had learned that his worries got bigger each day when he allowed the worry bug to nibble away. So to all of you worriers, Wince wants you to know, don't feed the worry bug or let your worries grow. The end. See you later.